Thank you uh, for coming to our talk, uh, One Infantry to Rule Them All, um, the Standardizing Multi-Cluster Management. And, uh, yes, I'm Corin Tedemus. I'm a software engineer at Google. I work on GKE Fleet. Oh, sorry, I did to go to the, that page. Um, and uh, I'm Ryan Zen. I'm working on uh, Microsoft Azure Fleet. So in this talk, uh, we are going to give you a quick brief overview of multi-cluster history and the current status. And then we will spend some time uh, describe our new and new shiny new API called Cluster Infantry Flash Profile API. And, uh, and, and we also are going to give you uh, some live demos. I uh, hope the live guard is extremely good today. And at the end, uh, we are going to uh, ask for help from the community in those future works. Uh, hopefully we can get more help and uh, uh, we can hear more feedbacks from this group. So without further ado, uh, let's start. So if you're here, either um, you have more, many clusters. How many of you are actually running multiple clusters? More than one clusters? Damn, very Wow, well. great. <laughs> now that here's the real question. How many of you are actually running them together? In a sense that you're not having a whole, just a pads like your uh, copy CTR into one, into another, into another, and they are all like different uh, types and shapes, but you're actually managing them together. Oh, cool, cool. And oh, how wow. many of you are uh, writing tools to run applications onto multi-clusters? So in a sense that you are not having uh, this deployment uh, to this cluster, to that cluster, but then you actually manage them kind of like together? Not bad, That's great. Cool. Is there contributors maybe of like Multiqueue or Argo that actually write applications for everyone? OSS for this? Also man, uh, cluster managers uh, like Kamada, ClusterNet, OCM, Kubi, Stellar, Kubi, something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And uh, okay. if, uh, if you didn't raise your hand at all, uh, just uh, come here for the Lord of Rings theme. Uh, you wait to the end. We have uh, uh, Easter egg for you. Okay, it all started simple, right? With one, one application. Your deployment is running in uh, your one single cluster that works well. But then eventually you realize that you need that application to run onto multiple clusters. And in that case, uh, like Argo, MultiQ, they all invented their own ways to have a list of clusters. And, and most likely, currently they are using a list of uh, secrets or some sort of like that. And that still works okay-ish. Not the best practice, but it's okay. -ish. And then you have multiple applications, multiple multi-cluster applications sitting there. Uh, they, they both need to uh, manage or utilize a bunch of clusters. So they both, uh, as any software engineers like to do, create their own list of uh, stuff, right? Uh, list of their own representation of uh, cluster, clusters, right? And then here comes the cluster manager. When you have multiple clusters, you want to have a cluster manager. As I mentioned, there are multiple cluster managers in the open source world and, and in the cloud provider world. We all want to manage clusters. And in that sense, we are all going to create our own list of clusters. Now we can see the problem is uh, basically everybody is uh, doing the same thing again and again and again, both from the producer side and from the consumer side. So yeah, again, uh, here's a, just a, a quick list of the um, efforts in this community. Right? Basically, again, everybody is doing their own multi-cluster. Um, so in the CNCF uh, landscape, you can see have, we have Kubi Fleet. This is kind of new. We are contributing uh, to CNCF uh, in the process of contributing to the CNCF. And then there's OCM, ClusterNet, Kamada, Kubi, Stellar, Kubi, Admiral, things like that. And also, that's the uh, cluster manager side. And uh, from the consumer side, for the multi-cluster application side, there's a queue. I think how many of you have seen this multi-queue going to beta? Yeah, huge announcement uh, yeah, with the, I don't know, 2,000 people sitting there. Um, 10,000. 10,000, yeah, 10,000 people. <laughs> multi-queue, right? And uh, Argo City has its application set. Uh, Kubi Vela has its multi-cluster stuff. It still uh, has this primary and uh, remote mode. And on top of that, cloud providers also try to help. Right? Basically, that's, that's us. Uh, we have GK Cloud, GK Fleet, and the Azure Fleet. 
So yeah, again, everybody is doing their own multi-cluster. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there are uh, tons of um, uh, developers writing their own scripts, running some uh, servers in their basement, and yeah. There's as many scripts as there's people in this room. For sure. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, so now uh, Quarantine is going to uh, uh, tell you what's our effort to uh, solve this problem. Yeah, so as part of SIG multi-cluster, so this is a SIG multi-cluster effort. Uh, we wanted to bring yet another one, I guess, and standardize them all if possible. Uh, so we want a community-backed API to define what that cluster li look, list looks like. Um, so defining the list and also defining the groundwork for tooling to leverage that list so everyone could start sharing the same tools to either produce those cluster lists uh, or consume them, and whether it's uh, to access the clusters or see where they are or anything like that. So uh, we looked at what was there out there. Uh, we saw that everyone was naming it differently. Uh, so like we couldn't find really a standard or winner there, so we came up with our own. Um, really, there's an XKCD for this. I mean, bring another standard on top of all the others. But anyway, um, so we have that cab that's merged. Um, we had a lot of arguments as far as signal to cluster, and we landed on this definition of cluster profile. So it's a CRD that's called cluster profile. You can see an example on the right of the screen here. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, it's an object with uh, a display name, so whatever fancy name you want to give to your cluster, a cluster manager if you want to track how this cluster kind of got there, and then the version and a bunch of properties, properties being maybe the most interesting field here, and we'll get back on this. Um, we had a bunch of arguments on the set of rules for this object. We wanted to keep it simple, but at the same time, um, figuring out what, how we would manage it and use it. So we kept it namespaced. Uh, that was a pretty important thing for us. Uh, that made it much more easy to test and uh, keep it constrained and writing permissions and all that. So namespace was pretty important. Uh, we also mapped it to cluster set, which is another concept for SIG multi-cluster. Um, please go to SIG multi-cluster if you're not familiar. Um, and then uh, the properties, we agreed on the properties. Uh, the other thing we agreed on is what we didn't want to do. Um, what we didn't want to do is deal with implementation. So this is just an API. It's a CRE definition. We're not writing cluster managers. We're not writing consumers of it. We're just doing the API definition. So we, we want the community to come with some implementation to support this unified list. Um, so that's one of the non-goal for us. The second non-goal is we didn't want to dig into provisioning. Um, this API reflects a cluster. It's uh, kind of a pointer to a cluster, if you will. Uh, it is not the cluster itself. It's not the cluster object and it is not um, aimed to create the cluster for you. It's a reflection of the cluster after you've created it. So if we go back to our previous picture, now the diagram is a little bit more simple. There's only one list, so we've effectively unified them all, hopefully. Um, so that's the cluster profile at work. To simplify even more, because that's how we're going to talk about it, let's remove the right part. You can imagine if there's a cluster profile, there's a cluster for it. Uh, and this is how we're going to show usually the cluster profile is like a producer on the left, a cluster manager, produces a cluster profile, and on the right you've got some consumers of it, the multi-cluster applications. And now let's look what this is in practice. Let's leverage the cluster profile. So let's focus on the producer side of it. And here we're just listing a couple. I mean, we're working on GKE and Azure, so we'll have support for cluster profile. Uh, we already have fleets, but we want to translate them in the cluster profile so they can be easily supported via open source applications. So that's that. But if you have your own custom cluster manager, hey, write the cluster profile. That shouldn't be too bad. So let's look actually how Azure does it. Cool. Thank you very much, Gordon. Yeah, so um, we're going to show uh, this uh, demo is about a Kubi fleet. Uh, Kubi fleet is the open source project that is behind Azure Fleet Manager. And uh, this you are just uh, sub got merged. I think this is the PR file merged two days ago. Yay. <laughs> now uh, we are officially having this in the, uh, in the repo. Then I'll do a demo for you. Let's see. How do I find? No, just go there. Yeah. OK, let me see if I still have everything ready. So this is, I set up a, I set it up a, uh, 
uh, fleet, but that's an open source fleet. So I'm now pointing to good. Let's see. So so I'm pointing to my upstream hub, which is this is a management cluster, manager manager cluster, mm, control plane cluster. And uh, let's see the, how many cluster does it have? Okay, so it has uh, one cluster joint. Basically, this is what cluster is joint. And then let's see uh, cluster profile. Okay, now we have this one. This was I think I joined that uh, 40 minutes ago. And let's take a look what it has. Um, so here you can see that it has the, uh, I don't know, can you see that? Do I need to can just zoom in a little bit more? Hopefully uh, those in the back can see better. Um, this kind of the, the most I can zoom. Um, so you can see here there's, there is uh, the spec is uh, we have a cluster manager with Kubi fleet. We have labels, uh, Kubi fleet, and uh, the condition says the API server is healthy. Right, this is kind of what we have now. In now, let me join another cluster. Just let me make sure I have the context. Okay, this is pointing the hub. So I have uh, one, two, three. Let me join a bunch of them. Let's see. I'm I'm optimistic. Okay, let's join like three of them. This is this is a script. Basically, it's an open source one. You, it, same thing. Most of open source projects using a secret. So basically, grab the secret from the service token secret from the hub, and put it into the member cluster. And uh, now let's see how many do we have. Oh, no, we, we start to have. I think I joined two and three and the four. Right? Where's number four? Ooh. Oh, number four is coming. Okay. Cool. Um, let's take a look at number four. Okay, but I think it's uh, pretty much the same. Oh, currently you can see that the user agent reports no status yet <coughs> because it hasn't really joined yet. It takes some time. In the same time, let me show you. Again, hopefully it works. Now the second one is joined. Now let me delete one. Second one is joined, right? Oh, that second one. Delete this guy. Then, so basically, this means uh, this is open source way to unjoin a member cluster from the fleet, and then the cluster profile should also disappear. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the demo. Uh, now, I'll hand back to Corinton. <laughs> yeah, Azure to learn. <laughs> um, so Azure can publish customer profile. That's really cool. Thanks for merging this PR. Um, let's look at the right side a little bit. Um, so I mentioned multi-cluster application, reading cluster profiles, and trying to get a bunch of them all using the same list. So as examples, I mean, Argo is often the easiest tool to do multi-cluster and the most common, I guess, for us. Uh, and multi queue, I was on stage, so I mean, yay, <laughs> like, we get it. Uh, and but any application you can think of, I mean, we mentioned Karma, Cube Admiral, Cube Valor, there's a, a ton of them. Um, but let's talk a little bit how we want to uh, approach them first, because everyone's doing their own thing. So how are we going to convince them to use it, or how are we going to bridge to them? This kind of three approaches we're taking with them, and we're talking directly to all those projects uh, as much as we can, trying to engage discussions. The first way we want to do it is if they have a plugin model, write a plugin that will leverage cluster profile directly. Uh, that's something Argo does. Um, I don't think it exists just yet, but if someone wants to write it, please. <laughs> that shouldn't be too hard. Um, a second option has been translation. Imagine the cluster profile is written, but you have that other list that your application is leveraging. Well, you just need a, uh, a little controller that's going to translate the cluster profile, read it, dump the other object you need. Simple translation. Uh, I'll show an example. I do this with Composition, which is a new little open source tool that um, the KCC people, the config controller people did. It's a pretty cool uh, little thing when you don't want to write controller in just templates. So easy way. And the last way, which is 
our end goal, if we can win everything, is everyone leverages the cluster profile directly and we remove the need for that custom list for everyone. So we really want to get to that last one, but we know it's going to take a long time before we get there. So at least we have two alternatives for a lot of those projects. So I wanted to give a little demo on Argo. Um, I put together an entire application. Um, so if we start from the left, I have my fleet. Uh, I mean, I work on GKE fleets, I have a ton of fleets. So I've leveraged one of my fleets. And I have a tiny sinker that I wrote. I mean, it's really a bash script in a loop. So I open source that if you want it, but I wouldn't recommend it. It writes <laughs> into a cluster profile. Um, and then I have a little composition that translates the cluster profile into cluster secret for Argo. Uh, if you're familiar with Argo, it's uh, entirely declarative for their configuration, or at least the support declarative. Uh, so that was a very easy way for me to use that translation method from cluster profile to cluster secret. And then to show it all, I have a, a tiny uh, guestbook application, which is an application set that goes on any workload cluster of my fleet. Uh, so let's actually dig in there. Uh, that's going to be, how do I get back to the slide? Oh, really? No. What is it? Oh, whatever. Let's get out. All right, so this is my fleet. I want to close everything. So it's a simple fleet of, with a management cluster. I put it in the fleet, and I got two members in the fleet. You can see they're registered here. And I got one member, which is not registered, uh, which is a GK cluster. I didn't want to create the cluster live because that takes a while. But uh, the cluster is available, and it's right there. And on the right-hand side here, um, I have my two. So it's one application per cluster. Um, because that's how Argo shows it. It doesn't show application set. Their uh, dashboard doesn't sh support it. But if I go settings and cluster, we can see my, um, my clusters in there. So this one is like number one. So that was the first cluster. So let's actually go and register this extra member. So we're adding it to the fleet. So one click. Here we go. OK, that takes a little bit of time, but that happened. So it's the member three is not part of the fleet. I mean, if I go here, it may have happened already. No, it hasn't. Great. Uh, if that happens too fast, I don't have anything to show you anymore. So let's actually look into my management, management cluster, um, what it looks like. Oh, really? <coughs> oh, OK, here we go. <laughs> Uh, it's live. I mean, you can see we got even the lags. Um, so I got Argo CD deployed in here, and my cluster profile are living in this namespace, which is named after my GK project. That's a little convention I used to not get too confused with my fleets. So let's actually look like look at the cluster profiles. Get cluster profiles minus n. OK, so we have the two members and the management cluster. They had cluster profile. They were there before, so they're already in there. Um, we can look quickly also at the Argo CD secrets. Uh, so you can see what they were uh, secrets, what they were translated into. Uh, so we have those two members here. Um, and obviously, my sinker takes forever because it's on the loop somewhere. So let's. Uh, puppet. You know, the easiest way to get something to sync is to force it the hard way. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a patient man here. Uh, zero and it's app cluster profile sinker. I think that's how I named it. Nope, that's not how I named it. Damn it. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Here you go. Hey, see, second try. Um, so let's just wait, and our cluster profile should arrive. Oh, here you go, 26 seconds. So, see, I needed to nudge it. So <laughs> it just arrived. So let's actually go back to our Argo CD. Oh, it, here we go. Well, I just got my Argo CD to go there. So that's it was the whole of thing. Live demo. Yeah, the beauty of live demo, you get lag. That's what you get. Um, so if you go back here. That was the whole thing. I added a cluster to my fleet. It was synced into a cluster profile, translated to an Argo secret. Argo reacted my application set and deployed the extra application. 
obviously a cluster comes and go that would react. That's the whole point of this. So it's just cluster profiles. All right. Hope you enjoy those live demos and uh, uh, hold your breath when, <laughs> when we delete our part. It's a good namespace, really. Yeah. OK, so yeah, you've seen the demo. And uh, now here's the, the real uh, future work, right? The, we ne that's how we get to the real inf one inventory rule the more. Um, so uh, the first uh, obstacle we are facing now is the authentication and authorization part. So the authentic authentication part, uh, there are th uh, mostly three ways in our cap. The first is what uh, it's not following the order. The order is here. Like the first is what we uh, you see. Basically, we use secrets. Argo needs one. Multi-queue needs one. Pretty much everybody needs one. But it, uh, but if you go to the sig sig or off or sig security, um, whoever you talk to them, it's not going to be blessed by by them. So uh, what we we also would not recommend this way. What we recommend is uh, two ways. One is the pool model. The pool model means um, instead of having your control plan basically holds everybody's secret and get compromised and your whole fleet is gone, you actually uh, have this uh, other way around that the, your uh, member clusters actually having a way to talk to your hub clusters. And then we have a, a work API that is also sponsored by the SIG multi-cluster that have a kind of standard way for the uh, workload cluster to grab the work from the control plane and uh, apply that and make it work. So we can use that so that I can avoid this uh, secret pollution there. A another way uh, is also a pretty um, standard way in the push model without any secrets that you need to set up your OIDC uh, issuer and then utilize the workload identity federations so that your token on your control plane ha can actually be authorized to uh, authenticate it onto the, uh, your member clusters, your or workload clusters, and without m requiring you store a long-term secret somewhere in your control plane. So these are the three ways we want to uh, integrate. And on top of that, after you have the authentication, you still need the authentication uh, authorization, right? Even if your token doesn't have any secret, you also do not want that token to be a pretty much a cluster that, mean that can do anything on that member cluster. So you actually want your application have uh, certain RBAX rules apply to that. But currently, if you look at our uh, cluster profile API on the right, I put it here, we don't actually have a way to specify that. So we are working in a SIG to try to define this process, make sure that uh, we still have the kind of standard way to do that. So that's another area that we would like more uh, input from the community and more um, uh, help there. And another, the next thing is, I think, the current uh, alluded to earlier was, uh, again, if you look at currently that the cluster profile, it actually kind of have a bare bones CRDs, but the, the real power is in the properties, right? When uh, the whole purpose of this uh, cluster profile is for the other applications to use it, but for the applications to use it, they need to know what kind of cluster this uh, cluster profile is representing. For example, you want to have uh, health signals if the cluster is healthy. Uh, a, a few common characteristics is like <coughs> locations or regions, uh, its type, whether it's uh, a product product or staging or canary uh, type of clusters. And uh, of course, uh, we cannot miss that. Uh, the theme of this whole world is uh, GPUs, right? You need to know how, what kind of GPUs you have and how much does that cost. And um, to use that, we can also leverage another SIG multi-cluster API called About API, which is serving quite similar purpose, but that API is sitting on those member clusters. It's not sitting in the control plane. So you do not have this single panel glass, whatever you call it, to have a clear view of every clusters, but that we can actually pull these, unify these two APIs to support the same standard properties. Now, the, again, if you have ever worked in SIG, you know that we spent three months on a name and another three months on namespaces versus cluster scope. So we would like more uh, data inputs to, to join the SIG multi-cluster to decide what are the standard, character, uh, standard properties everybody needs to support. And what are the, um, oh, sorry, I think it's what, what are the core properties that everybody needs to, needs to support? What are the standards? that if you support, it has to conform to something. And then the extension that is the Wild Wild West. You can, you can define your own stuff. Right. And uh, yeah, again, the theme is kind of work with the multi-cluster. Uh, on the fanning side, basically, is the uh, producer side 
we would like, you, we already demoed uh, GKE and uh, AKS have uh, uh, supporting that. We would like to have more class managers uh, to support that, uh, all the uh, open source uh, projects to support this. And uh, uh, we will have more proper cloud provider integrations uh, in the near future. And for the fan out part, um, yeah, we need, uh, uh, hopefully, to, for, for one inventory to do them all, we need all of them to come to, into, our, uh, in, into our kingdom, right? So we, we would like to have more uh, uh, cluster manager, cluster, multi-cluster applications that uh, need to uh, look at the clusters, uh, integrate with us. Um, we have multi-cluster SIG meetings every two weeks, and we might have, Tuesdays. Adding, we may add in more meetings that just for the community. Right, we can help. And finally, for those who are still waiting for the Easter egg, there you go. Yes, thank you. Questions? Well, I think there might mics there. There's a mic if anyone, or screen. Do you support Azure Arc? Oh. Okay, that's a good question. Um, it's more of a production question. Yeah, definitely on the ro roadmap. Um, but uh, for the Kubi, Kubi fleet, it is open source. You can now Helm install it right now and uh, uh, try it first. Um, <clears throat> so I, I came in a little late, so forgive me if I missed this, but is there a custom controller that you have to have install into the cluster to enable these uh, resources like cluster profile, et cetera? <coughs> cluster the profile by itself is just a CRD. So it's, it's there, it's really an API. Now, how you want the cluster profiles to get there, it will depend on how, where your cluster live and how you manage them. So either if you're using a cloud provider, you'll likely have a solution already existing either from the cloud directly or that you can install. Um, if you're managing them, I don't know, in Terraform or something, you'll have to do it yourself write a controller, um, so it, it depends here. Um, okay. Sig multi-cluster, we're trying to do more of an API and aligning on the API and, and let implementations flourish, and I'm sure the community will align, I think, on the, on the okay. implementation. Thank you. Sig multi-cluster, there is also a cluster inventory API. Can you clarify the relationship between cluster inventory API and uh, this API, because I saw a document in, uh, in Sig Multicluster that shows an example. It looks like Cluster Inventor. It looks very similar to this one. So I'm a little confused now about these two. Yeah, very, very good question. Yeah, um, I probably should have clarified that a bit more. So Cluster Inventory is like an umbrella term for the, all the APIs that we are going to define. The Cluster Profile is the first API in, under that umbrella. And one, another one we are looking at is that RBAC, I was alluding to that we're defining more APIs that allow the application to define what kind of RBAC rule they want in, on that member clusters. That's another API we are still, for. we don't even have a name yet. Again, naming is hard. Um, so yeah, so the, again, coming back is cluster inventory is an umbrella term and cluster profile API is its concrete name. And we will have more APIs under that umbrella. Yeah, I had a question on the um, kind of the about API and the, the cluster profile API. Like some of the properties would probably be like static, like the amount of CPU or memory resources on the, that are like allocated or available on the cluster. Is there any sense of wanting to do like more dynamic? Like if you wanted to have real time like information that you could do then scheduling across, like trying to pick a workload or a cluster for a certain workload? Definitely, that's, that's the whole purpose, yeah. But uh, the key is we want to define, as you said, what are the dynamic resources or properties we want to make it standard, the key is standard. Everybody can throw them in, in their own property. But key is in the, from the SIG multi-cluster part, we want to make sure it's a community standard that everybody want to support. For example, maybe uh, the allocatable CPUs, that, that's an easy one. But again, if you get into GPU, it's different. Everybody has their own skills, different types. How do you define that? Uh, I think, again, um, we welcome more input from the real use cases. That would be very helpful. It's definitely adding a lot of complexity as soon as you need to refresh, right? Um, also, we're talking about health, and like health has 15 different meanings, right, depending what you mean. Um, so uh, static fields will be a lot easier, dynamic, and then 
the refresh and all will get more complicated, so that's something we need to continue to explore and see what we, the community aligns here on, on usage. Um, worst case, you can always go query the about API also. Um, it's a little bit more annoying, but you can always access it since you have access to the clusters. Hey there. So um, I'm not really a great engineer, and um, I, I don't know if I should participate in creating APIs, but I do run a platform team where I'm interested in kind of like the use cases that y'all are building this for. Just to be clear, like what do I need to do to help make sure that this thing that you're building works for me? I didn't get the last part. Um, like, what do I need to do? I need to join, is it like, I'm just kind of intimidated. And, and, and if I join SIG multi-cluster meetings, like there's all these smart people there, like what can I do as a you know, dumb product manager to no. help drive? <clears throat> um, no, come to SIG multi-cluster or come to the Slack. Just tell us what you're trying to do. Um, there's a lot of people trying to figure out multi-cluster. I mean, we are still trying to figure out multi-cluster, honestly. Um, this is one brick. Let's add a bunch of bricks together. We can look at your particular example. Mm -hmm. um, figure so out I could come to the meetings things. and just give you a list of CUJs? Is that, like, this is what I want? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Practically, yeah. Oay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone.